welcome back to customers part B and as I hit invoice the invoice screen came up with new sets of features and some of the same uh, same thing over here on the right hand side what's new it's the same thing but you can look at some details over here the main thing is that it took my it took my estimate and it turned it into an invoice okay that's the main thing to look at uh, so let's say everything looks good I'm going to make the invoice actually a little bit further out. Invoice number 1505. PO number is 1505 received by them. And I'm going to give them net 30 to pay this. I'm going to hit save and new. I'm going to hit yes. I'm going to hit yes. And what I'll do is for warehouse direct. I'm going to go under servicing of forklifts for the customer job and I'm going to set up one more invoice for the servicing to commence at 2.5 it's going to be 15.07 that's going to be due on receipt we're going to go to quantity 1 item code we're going to call it engine service or maintenance whatever it is so this is an example let's say every month they have to spend hundred fifty dollars on engine service so what I'm going to show you in this report is how to memorize it and memorizing it means that it will automatically come up every whatever days you want it to be so if this is a monthly thing I'm going to go over here to this thing called memorize and service of forklifts the main thing is I want it to be monthly the next date, if this is 2-5, the next date will be 3-5. So I'm going to go back to 3-5, 2012. I'm going to hit OK. And the idea over here is uh, that I get to memorize it once again. Now service, it's not taxable, so I'm going to put no. doesn't even matter whether you put California or not, because you put it's not taxable. Service, you don't charge tax typically, at least in California you don't. And I'm going to hit save and new. Hit yes again. Hit yes again. I'm going to close out of invoice. It's going to take me back to my customer center. And I wanted to basically show you what we did. And it, the numbers will reflect right over here as this is what the balance is open. And that's kind of why you do customer job. Uh, it just gives you an idea once again what's open for what just a little bit more detailed now what we did was considered an invoice invoice is when you're sending somewhat of a bill to a customer client and you're letting him know that hey this is the amount that you owe you need to pay this sales receipt is really more in a retail environment per se or online internet sales it's basically where you create the sales receipt after you got paid. So invoices before you got paid, you need to collect. Sales receipt is, hey, I just sold something on the internet, whatever it is that I sell. We just sold a forklift on the internet. And we sold it to another customer, now Warehouse Direct. So I'm going to add a new customer on the fly. And this customer's name is going to be called internet mr internet i'm going to copy this over here mr internet to mr internet i really don't care to fill out the rest of the details because you've seen how i do that this is just an example i'm going to hit ok sales well let's say we're already in so check numbers if you got a check or you could use check number uh, i use check number for the codes that are the authorization numbers that I get through my merchant account when I run a credit card. So if I do an authorize.net and the transaction came to this thing right here, payment method was American Express. Or what I do sometimes is I'm going to call it auth.net for authorize.net. So I know that it was through the gateway. And what I will do over here is I will do dash A for American Express, dash M for MasterCard. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. It all depends on how you want to monitor it. 
item, go over here. We sold a forklift for 12502 And we'll say that this person was in Arizona. So there is no tax in this point because we don't tax out of state. We only tax in California if that's how your business goes. And I'm gonna hit save and new. When I hit save then close, took me back to customer center, customer information. You'll see the sales receipt that I did. And you'll see it's under a thing called undeposited funds. Personally, I don't like this at all. Everybody's different. I'm gonna go ahead and change this setting. And undeposited funds means that you did not record what bank this is going to go to so if you have a merchant account and you know your merchant account is going to go to a specific bank uh, people use undeposited funds because they want to wait to see the actual money in the bank before they transfer it over there me personally if I have a merchant account it's tied to a specific account I kind of already look at my daily balance but the whole point is, is I kind of look at this at reconciliation and I try to cut the two-step process and I'll make it into one step instead simply go to edit go to preferences screen comes up you will go under payments company preferences and uncheck this thing over here that says use undeposited funds as a default deposit account and we are back to customer center customer information I'm gonna double click on this transaction and what's different about this one is you will notice it says over here deposit to yes this is where I get to choose that this goes into my checking directly hit save a new hit yes hit yes and that's how you fix that so going forward on all your sales receipts you can tell it exactly which account it went into and we're gonna close out over here for now and we are back to customer center next thing we're going to do is receive a down payment on this forklift so we will go to new transactions receive payments this little box comes up it's going to be for the sales of forklifts you can see your opening amount that's uh, due we're going to put an amount of twenty five hundred dollars was put as a deposit the invoice date was on one five so let's just say on one five they made that deposit Payment method was a check, check number 1501. And we are going to deposit to not undeposited. We're going to put this to our checking account. And I'm going to hit save and new. Actually, I should have closed it. We are back over here. You see the original invoice amount. You see what was paid. And this is what is due on the forklift. Next thing we are going to cover are credit memos. So I'm going to go ahead and create one right here. We will do it for the forklift. Let's just say that you ran over your customer on the way out with the forklift and you want to give him a discount of $500 for running over his foot. <laughs> of course, I'm kidding. But we're going to create a credit memo. Let's say he came back a week later. And that's when you guys ran over his foot. Forklift man pajama. Give him a discount of $500. Of course, you got to give him his tax back because he did pay tax on it as well. Unless you just want to make it a straight 500. And you just got to play with the numbers, right? And this is where you have options. Do you want to retain it as an available credit? Give a refund or apply it to an invoice. So for this credit, we're going to apply it to an invoice. We're going to apply it to the open invoice over here. I'm going to hit done. Close out of over here. Back to our customer center. 14343 was original invoice. They paid $2,500. They got a credit for $517. Now the balance is $11,342. But we are not done yet. They came back another week and you ran over their foot again. Now they're pissed. Now they want some money back in their pocket. So we're going to go to credit memo. Same thing. We'll call it credit memo 15110. This was another week later. Item off the forklift man pajama. This one is for a thousand dollars because it's something it really hurt. I'm gonna hit save and new or save and close either way. This time I'm gonna give a refund. I'm gonna hit okay. 
and right away it takes you to this screen over here and I'm going to issue the refund via check it's going to be through our checking account and the check is needs to be printed hit memo for running over his foot twice and of course you could have it to be printed or not to be printed so if you're printing checks it's to be printed if you do it manually you can uncheck it and put the actual check number if you're handwriting it so it's going to be check number 2905 hit OK save and close we are back once again and you will see that you have your credit memo and it's been paid as well this one was applied to the invoice and that's pretty much how you take care of credit memos and apply it as credits and give refunds as well and this will wrap up our video for the customer section for QuickBooks 2013 our next video will be on the vendors section